So let's work through an example problem for ratio analysis. So in this example, we're given some balance sheet information, some income statement information up in the upper right, and then we're told that we need to compute the following ratios. So we have a list of ratios that we have to go through and figure out what they are. So let's start off with the current ratio. So that's going to be your current assets divided by your current liabilities. Our current assets here, those are cash, accounts receivable, and inventory. Our current liabilities, we only have one. That's accounts payable. So we're going to add up all of our current assets and then divide it by our current liabilities. So we eventually get 30,300 divided by 12,000. When you divide that, you get a current ratio of 2.53 to 1. Now the acid test ratio. So that's your cash plus short-term investments plus your receivables divided by your current liabilities. Well, we definitely already know our current liabilities. We just did that in the last ratio. Let's look at the numerator. So our cash, that's going to be our 6,300. Short-term investments, we would be told if we had short-term investments. They would show up on our balance sheet. Here we don't have those, so we'll just plug in a zero for short-term investments. And then receivables, that's our 13,000. So that will come out to 19,300 divided by our current liabilities of 12,000 giving you an acid test ratio of 1.61 to 1. Now our accounts receivable turnover. So that's your net credit sales divided by your average net receivables. So we have some income statement data up in the upper right that will help us figure this one out. So our net credit sales, well, that's our 150,000. Then our average net receivables, what we do there is we're going to take our accounts receivable information from 2018 and 2019. We add those two balances together and we divide by two. So your average net receivables ends up as 14,000. Now your receivables turnover, that's 150,000 divided by 14,000. So your, your receivables turnover will be 10.71 times. Now inventory turnover. That's your cost of goods sold divided by your average inventory. Well, they give us our cost of goods sold. That's just the 70,000. Our average inventory, we'll find that the same sort of way that we found our average receivables in the last problem. So we take our inventory balances, 11,000 and 9,500. We add those together, divide by two, and your average inventory is 10,250. So your inventory turnover is 6.83 times. Now your profit margin. This is your net income divided by your net sales. So our net income was given to us over on the income statement as 22,500. Our net sales are 150,000. So we plug our numbers into our formula and we get a profit margin of 15%. Now asset turnover. So this is your net sales divided by your average assets. Well, we know our net sales, that's 150,000. We've used that before. Average assets, that's the average total assets. So we look at our total assets over on our balance sheet. They happen to be the same amount, 107,300. So we'll find the average of our total assets from 2018 and 2019. So our asset turnover, when you divide those two amounts, becomes 1.40 times. Now your return on assets. This is your net income divided by average assets. So the denominator stays the same, right? It's your average assets. That's the 107,300. Our net income divided by our average assets will give us a return on assets of 20.97%. Now return on common stockholders equity. So if we take a look at this 
formula, we have our net income. Well, that's given to us. That's the 22,500 minus preferred dividends. They would have to tell us somewhere that we paid out preferred dividends. In this problem, we aren't given that information, so we don't even worry about that. Then our average common stockholders equity. Well, your common stockholders equity is common stock and retained earnings combined. So when we plug in our numbers here, for average common stockholders equity, we need to take our common stock amounts from both 2018 and 2019 and our retained earning amounts from 2018 and 2019 Add those four numbers together and divide by two. So our average common stockholders equity ends up as 92,800. We take our net income divided by that 92,000 and our return on common stockholders equity is 24.25%. Now, debt to assets ratio. This is your total debt divided by your total assets. Well, your total debt, that's your total liabilities, right? So that's our just our 12,000 because we only have one liability here. We divide that by our total assets. So our debt to assets ratio is 11.18%.